Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the different ways you can travel around London through different transportation methods, the cost, Oyster cards, whether getting a car is worth it or not, and taxi services. watch part one and two of this series go check that out I talk about living costs and food so first up I'm going to be talking about the different types of oyster cards everything you need to know is on the tfl.gov.uk website but I've just broken down some of the important things that you should know so children can travel for free or at a discounted rate in London with a oyster card or if they are accompanied by an adult children under five don't actually need an oyster card as long as they are with a fair paying adult. They can take the tube, the DLR, the overground and the buses and trams for free. Children who are 5 to 10 years old can also travel for free as long as they are with a fair paying adult but if they are going to travel alone they need to have a 5 to 10 year old zip oyster photo card and then they can travel on the tube or the DLR and overground buses, etc. Children who are 11 to 15 years old can travel for free on buses and trams only with a zip oyster card, a photo card, and it has to have 11 to 15 on it. Um, so I remember when I was in secondary school, I used to take the buses for free. If they take the tube or overground or DLR, then they need to pay the child rate. Children who are 16 to 17 years old will have a 16 plus Oyster card and they need to pay 50% of the adult pay as you go fee. Uni students who live in London and doing a full time course in a University of London will get an 18 plus photo card. So this is what I had when I went to uni and I got 30% off all travel cards and bus passes and tram passes. But you won't get 30% off if you pay pay as you go so it's only for travel cards so I either got the weekly or monthly travel card when I was going to uni every day I won't go into detail about all the passes and oyster cards because there are too many but you can go on the TFL website and they will have all the information and details that you need to know but the last thing that I will add is that if you are over 65 then you'll get a freedom pass and then you can travel for free on buses and trains but remember to get all of this you do need to be a resident living in London um, tourists will get a different type of oyster card and you won't get all these discounts so every year fare prices increase this year in March it increased to 4.8 percent which is really high so here are the prices prices for this year you can see for pay as you go depending on which zone you're traveling to and from they will cap the price travel cards are more expensive so it's better to get the weekly monthly or annual if you are constantly traveling to and from the same place every day it's better to have an oyster card zip card or contactless card because paying at the station directly is way more expensive and you're going to save so much more money if you have these cards on you here's an example of the difference between traveling between zone one and two one way and zone one and three one way it's cheaper if you travel within zone one and two but as you know living in zone one and two is more expensive so it's up to you what you prioritize do you prioritize living costs or travel so some of you might be confused by this but yes you can use your bank card as long as it's contactless um, as an alternative rather than paying with an Oyster card and the prices are the exact same as paying with an Oyster card. This doesn't apply to children though, children should have a zip Oyster card but this is for adults. You can even download the TFL Oyster and contactless app if you need to track your history, if you've lost your card etc and if you need a refund as well as long as you've registered through the app then they will place the refund back into your contactless card. So is transport in London reliable? Yes and no. 
just be prepared before you travel um, check the night before for the line statuses uh, check if there's partial closure or any suspensions um, because there is bound to be some kind of line closure or suspension which is going to disrupt your travel but on a good day trains can run smoothly but this is very rare there are a lot of strikes and suspensions in London so just be prepared for that um, you may have different difficulty going into work or going to school and in that case you would have to take the bus but during strikes buses are extremely crowded and busy you might have to wait for three or four buses so far the tube kind of sounds like a nightmare but most people take the tube because it's not really necessary to drive in London you can get to most places by tube or by bus so here's some tips about transportation in London um, like when you're on a train when they say please mind the gap between the train and the platform sometimes you actually do need to mind the gap because it could be really big and you might have to like jump over people have lost their phones due to the gap being too big or fallen through the gap so you do kind of need to be careful at some stations and another thing is that there is no signal underground so depending on your phone network you might be able to connect to the wi-fi but if you use something like GiveGaff, like me you won't get any wi-fi or signal underground so yeah you kind of have to be selective um when you choose a phone network as well. There is no AC on the train, so during the summer it can get really, really stuffy. So just make sure that you're carrying a bottle of water so that you don't feel dehydrated or dizzy. Um, sometimes the train might get stuck in the tunnel during the summer and that's when everyone is, yeah, sweating and hating life. <laughs> Transportation staff will sometimes come to check if you have paid. So this especially happens on buses. Um, someone will come around with a machine and they will ask you to tap your Oyster card or your contactless card um, to check if you've actually paid. So make sure you're using your own Oyster card and not someone else's because then you're gonna get fined. You can eat and drink and carry pets on trains and buses but obviously be mindful of other people, um, don't make a mess and, and yeah you definitely can't drink alcohol and do anything illegal on trains and buses. If you lose something, especially something expensive like a phone on the bus or train, you're probably never going to see it again so obviously take care of your belongings. So these are some of the apps that you should download um, when getting around London. I've used them, City Mapper is great, you've got the TFL app and you've also got maps and um, it will tell you about line closures etc. So these are really useful to have on your phone. So we do have night buses and night trains. Uh, night trains run on Friday nights and Saturday nights so it's usually when people are going like clubbing or drinking and yeah some lines um, I think there's only about four or five lines that are open um, during the night so it runs for 24 hours and the fares are off peak so you won't be charged too much but there are night buses as well um, usually there'll be like an N in front of it so in front of the number yeah depending on what time you take the bus it doesn't come often you might have to wait for like 15 to 20 minutes but they are definitely around so let's talk about driving and uber and taxi services so for me personally I don't drive, I don't have a car because there was never a need for me to drive around London. I could take the buses and trains. Um, most young people don't actually drive in London unless they really have to, unless they have a family or they need to go long distances. But most people take the train everywhere or um, I mean you can even cycle or walk. I think less people are having cars in London. Another thing about cycling is that there are cycling lanes but it is kind of dangerous and a lot of people do get injured um, from cycling so I think just be really careful if you're 
good at cycling then I would recommend getting a bicycle but if you're not then definitely stay away from the roads it is really dangerous the cycle lanes aren't really planned out properly so i think this annoys a lot of drivers as well there are a lot of taxi and car services around but for me i've always used uber they are like more reliable and cheaper i mean you're not always going to get the best friendly driver but it's definitely cheaper than getting a black cab i remember taking a black cab and it cost me around 60 pounds for a 20 minute journey so it's definitely not worth it so just remember if you do travel to central london there will be a congestion charge you can get a resident parking permit for just one vehicle and you can apply online through the parking permit gov.uk website and here are the prices for that these are the prices for parking in the city of london you should pay straight away after parking your car at one of the parking meters the new machines they take card uh, they take cash they take contactless they take phone payment and then when the ticket prints out then you should display it um, inside your car so that is visible from the outside but if you don't want to do this there are also car parks that you can pre-book online finally let's talk about petrol stations so gas prices are kind of high in london um there are over 530 petrol stations in london and you can find them um near like a busy highway motorway or at supermarkets or near hotels on average you would pay around one pound 91 per liter that's the current uh, average for this year so yeah i tried to cover everything i hope this information was useful these are just like the different ways you can travel around london if you have any questions just leave a comment down below and i'll try to answer it in my next video my next video will be all about shopping so stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching bye